Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you the basic and more advanced uh, selections in SelfCAD. I have here on my screen a, um, a mixer that I group together, you can, see you can ungroup it, uh, just show this is, consists of multiple parts and I group them together as one unit. Um, I got this mixer created actually by following an interactive tutorial done by Kurtika. You can find them on SelfCAD uh, slash tutorials. Uh, with these interactive tutorials, you just follow it. And what I want to show here is the basic functionality when having a single object as a group. A group, I mean, it's, it's multiple objects, but it's grouped as a single group. In that case, they act as a unit. If I select or deselect them, if I'm going to do any action, for example, move it, they act as a single unit. Now, if you want to work on a single item, obviously you can ungroup them, but it, realistically speaking, this makes no sense. And if you have bigger objects, bigger groups, if you want to adjust something slightly, you don't want to break the group and keep on grouping, ungrouping. This is where the advanced selection comes in. You click on the advanced settings and you have something part selection. Now, this is a dynamic panel. Depends what you have selected. If you would switch, we will soon see. If you would switch to polygon or phase or edge or vertex mode, any of the other modes, this will be totally different. Um, while you are in object mode, if you have no groups, just a single object, this will be empty. Um, in this case, because we have a group, it shows up part selection. And if I turn on part selection, it will allow me to click on a single object. And then you can see now I can start moving this object separately as a part. And I can basically keep it selected, but then if I click here, I can deselect them. And now it's back working as a single unit. Now, if I go to the polygon mode, and if you click on polygon, you will see we have here different settings. And this is, first of all, the basics, what polygon is doing. You don't need advanced settings. See, everything is off. The basic idea of polygon is that you can select a tie thing that is flat. The technical definition of a polygon is everything that is flat. It's also called planar. It's on a plane, like it's completely flat, regardless how many faces it has. As long as it's closed, it's a single polygon. So if I would go to face mode, you would pick all of these individual faces. Uh, if you go to polygon mode, uh, then basically this entire thing acts as one. So let me talk about these advanced settings. Um, actually, they have part selection here also, the same name as an object uh, groups. And I want to show how it is. So let's go, if I go to inset, and I'll add some details to this. Let's say 10, and I finalize it. So now if I, let's say, deselect this, I can still select this entire thing as a polygon because it's one. If I go to advanced settings, this is where part selection comes in. I can decide I want to select just the inner part, maybe extrude them um, and start working just with the inner part by themselves. That's basically where part selection comes in. Now, what about other settings? I'll take a quick object uh, demo object, just a cube to demonstrate that. Um, basic object. So let's say if I select, I'll add some details to it. And let's make it, oops, I'm sorry, not add details. My mistake, I want to do resolution. So I could add details also, but yeah, three should be fine. I'm turning around to wireframe mode. Oh, I did the resolution on my different selection. I'm sorry. Let's go back to the selection and do resolution three. Okay. So now if I select as a polygon, this entire thing is one polygon, as you can see. And what if I'm going to go back to face mode now and I'm going to select just this like the selection, I'm going to select just a few things, just this polygon, and I'm going to move it up a little bit slightly, just to deform it a little bit. Okay, so I'm doing something like this. Now, if I've deformed this, if I go back to my polygon mode, you'll see it can no longer select. It selects like all of these differently. This is a polygon. These are polygons, they're flat, but and this is flat. So it's not really selecting everything at once. If you go to the setting tolerance, this is where this comes in. It will allow you to up the tolerance. And it will kind of say, okay, you know, it's it's not a completely flat, but let's ignore a little bit noise. That's basically what tolerance is. Say, take away noise, can still consider it flat. And it's kind of like rounding it. And you can see how I move it, depends how it is. And obviously, if you select the entire thing 10, it only becomes the entire object, becomes almost uh, as, as one, depending which angle you're taking it from. And because it basically looks how close things are flat to and so on. So that's basically what this comes into. Okay, so going back to... Uh, face mode, I can actually get rid of this uh, demo object and let's go back to this object. If I go back to face mode, and one quick thing if you've seen what happened before with the selection, that the, pol the way it works is if you go down a level, it will keep it selected. So if I select a polygon over here, you see I have still my tolerance on, so I can select this as a polygon. Without the tolerance, um, this would be 
basically selecting each face as a separate polygon because you know this is not flat to this one it's it's bended slightly so but if i have selected as a polygon and i move down to face selection this will stay selected if i move down to edge selection this will stay selected as edges vertex selection will stay selected as vertices if i move up a level like from vertices to edges it gets lost same idea if i would select edges and move up to faces it will get lost if i select faces and move up to polygons it will get lost so up, going upwards, uh, just based on the logic that application works, will lose the selection, but going downwards will keep the selection. Okay, so put that aside. Let's go back to face selection. Let's see what advanced settings we have. You already see we have loop selection, and as long as you have faces, you can have loop selection because that will work in anything. So if I turn it on, uh, first of all, without turning it on, you pick every face. In this particular case, it's a polygon face the same. Here, it's not the same. A polygon over here would select the entire flat thing or this side, and faces will select individual faces. So if I do over here, if I turn on my loop selection, I have two ways of selecting. I can click here and click on its neighbor and it will select the entire thing. I have over here the custom pattern on. It remembers the last setting. So last time I tested it, that's what I used. It remembered. So if you click on, again, on one and then its neighbor, it selects the entire thing. You can do the inverse side, click here and click this side. It will still select. Um, if you select, you can also select a range. So if I select, let's say from here until here, it selects only the range, not the entire loop. So you have this. Uh, then you have the option which is um, custom patterns. So custom patterns basically is what you've seen already before. You can make a custom pattern. For example, I click here to here. It selects the entire thing where it says select one, uh, select two and skip two. I can make it, let's say, select only one and then uh, skip only one. That's the default, by the way. So you will see how it selects like this. So it's basically what face selection will give you. Um, on edge selection, you have different options. Let's go to edge selection. And actually, you don't have to close it. You can switch between them, and it will keep on changing the spiral dynamically. So if I move to edge selection, we have actually loop selection and ring selection. Loop selection is the same idea as face selection. I can select uh, oops, this and its name. Actually, this is ring selection. I'm sorry. Loop selection is this way. So you select this. So you see you have an entire loop. And I can add a custom pattern, uh, the same idea. So you see I can select one and we'll skip one or how you play it and or you can have ring selections what i mistakenly tried before so let's deselect you click here and you click on this way and it's a ring and the same idea you can select a range from point a to point b and it selects the ring only from here and the same with loop selection that's what you have if you go to vertex selection basically the only options you have select all deselect all there's not really advanced settings and the reason is because these functions actually work with relationships. So if you have an edge, you know the relationship, this is connected to this. If you have a single vertex, it's, it's much more difficult to do, but that, that's more a technical way. Um, but basic, that's, that's the most uh, basic settings. Um, I would like to show you a little bit more on part selection, the way they act differently in drawing. Uh, it's not differently, it's just more advanced and more usable. So I'll give you a basic use case. I'll hide this away and I'm going to draw something kind of gibberish, just, just simple scribble and show you how this will work. So if I'm going to take, let's say, kind of like abuse it and try to do something random, just draw something here, something like this, and then maybe a spline that I'm going to intersect here and draw it like this. And I'm purposely not closing it. I'm just going to kind of leave it open over here. And then maybe take something here and kind of skew it like this. Okay. So this is a very interesting thing. So first of all, I want to show you that you have selection over here is face selection, self get tools doubles down, all of the tools almost, doubles down to each mode. So we looked before on objects, now we're looking at a profile. It's called a profile, by default gives it a name profile, you can change it, but kind of gives it a name, it's a profile. Now if you look at object mode, this will allow you to select minimum cycles. So, so this basically is a minimum cycle over here, this part, and I can go, let's say for example, I want to take this, I can go and delete them. See, I can take delete this, start making like this. Let's say this part is, is still one. This I can start taking like this and, and delete them and so on. Uh, if I go edge mode, let's take this back. If I go um, edge mode, instead of the example over here, this is actually two edges, this line, this line. Um, in edge mode, it will select just one edge. Let's say just one line, then separately this line. So the same thing if you take a circle, we'll select like each part from the circle separately in this edge mode. And obviously vertex mode will allow you to select just vertices, for example. Just kind of start moving this around and uh, 
you know, working just with vertices. So that's basically the idea. Now, if I'm going to uh, make this into a mesh, you go fill polygon. This actually where the another tool that doubles down fill polygon could be used to um, fill holes on an object, faces an object, or it could be used over here. It fills this, and this tool automatically knows what to do. This is not a polygon, it's empty, it just ignores it. And it filled everything here. But now if you go back to, uh, let's say, faces mode, uh, you will select each face, which is really a lot, a lot of tiny faces. If you go to polygon mode, this will select the entire polygon, which is also a problem. So I'm going to be first, let me just show you actually how you create an object like this. So fill polygon gives it just a, called a plane, it creates a plane. To convert it into a mesh, you go add thickness, which is another tool that doubles down. Um, and you can make it, let's say, height of 20. And now you have this object selected. Okay. So now again, if I'm going to get, you have this thickness as an object. But again, polygon selects everything, faces select small pieces. So let's see how we can select parts. So if I go to part selection, this is where this helps a lot, where I can start picking, you can see only parts. So let's say if I want to give it different heights for this, I can go extrusion and let's say extrude this. And then I can go, let's say part selection, select um, over here my parts and I select, let's say this part and you know, maybe these parts and this part, and you can start giving different heights and different stuff and playing. And this is quite helpful um, to working with these where parts are working on. So that's basically it. It's relatively simple and quite flexible. Um, I hope this is helpful. And let me know if you want me to show anything else. Okay, thank you. Have a great day. Bye.